strategic location of the fire station is perfect for our town. When that site was selected and, and used as the kind of central point, it's kind of the center of the spoke. We have great access to all areas of town via 115 or Main Street through town. We can hit all the main thoroughfares pretty quickly and um, it allows us to get to all areas of town and have relatively good response times and provide a, a high level uh, of service to the citizens of the town. And I think it's imperative that the location of, of any facility and possibly any future facilities stay close to this center spoke or center area of town and to be a presence in the center of town I feel like is very important for the fire department because we don't have units roaming and in various posts throughout the town our units all have to come from one central location and this location is ideal uh, allowing us to get to all areas of the town uh, relatively quickly. We're trying to give you a, a view of the station and the bay from up front to get a grasp of the tight quarters that we're in you're looking at modern style apparatus which are much larger, carry more equipment than the apparatus that the station was originally designed for. So needless to say it's, it's very tight. You can see the, the minim, minimal amount of clearance on either side of the vehicles um, and the minimal amount of space in between the vehicles for uh, personnel to get dressed in preparation for response. Uh, another thing to take note of is some of the, the uh, degradation. You can see the age and wear on the building. If you look at the thresholds um, of the garages, you can see some are sagging. You can see some cracking and water damage within the bricks as well. Um, it just shows that this building has served the town very well and for a very long time. These bays were constructed in the mid-60s and really have not had any adjustments or remodels or improvements or enhancements made since, with the exception of the far left door where our current ladder truck is, uh, had to be raised in order to fit the modern style apparatus into the building. Um, and even with that, there is minimal to no clearance uh, for that piece of apparatus to get in and out. We've had multiple instances where uh, apparatus have been damaged or uh, trim pieces have been uh, torn off or damaged because of the m minimal clearance and the difficulty maneuvering in such tight spaces um, and tight clearance doors. We've had some issues um, and encountered issues where the garage doors have been damaged, the, uh, the door frames have been damaged, the trim pieces have had to be replaced. Um, and it's just a, a constant worry or strain for, for us as uh, the members of the department. You can see t kind of the uh, tight quarters. Uh, you can see we have to have our extractor, which is the special washing machine that is used to decontaminate and wash our PPE. It's just kind of in the base space, space that would normally be an area for firefighters getting dressed or putting on their PPE. You know, over the years are limited on the types of apparatus uh, we have to buy, and at times even the apparatus have had to be customized. Uh, we aren't able to buy apparatus with ladder racks and things of that nature because the ceiling height is too low, which, you know, creates a compromise. We have to try to balance the length and height of the vehicle as opposed to being able to buy specifically what we may want or what may best serve the town. We have to make compromises because of, you know, it's either ability or inability to fit within the building itself. And you'll see how tight the clearance is on either side. Um, of the garage bay door. The mirrors literally almost touch and there's no space and no margin for error when the apparatus is backed into the building, you know, for anything to fit. Our PPE storage uh, and lockers are all open air and exposed to the elements, if you will, of the bay. So our PPE currently is absorbing carcinogens from the diesel exhaust of the apparatus. Uh, another component that you will notice a lack of is there is no ventilation system within the apparatus bay. Um, so all of the diesel particulates and carcinogens that are created in the diesel exhaust are free in the air and our personnel as well as their PP are readily exposed to that on a daily basis. Anytime a vehicle is started, anytime a vehicle leaves the uh, bay, you know, the, that exhaust accumulates and those particulates accumulate 
uh, on the PPE, creating a now what we know is a, a carcinogen and hazard for the personnel. The apparatus gear being placed where it is, you know, we have no control. It's not a temperature controlled environment. So we have moisture issues uh, during different parts of the year. There are times where personnel have to decontaminate or clean their gear even without having used it uh, while they were off shift because it accumulates the, the dust and pollen or diesel particulates, you know, as well as moisture. And we do have a kind of adapted system that will circulate some air into the bay. But when that vent opens, it happens to be right above the gear lockers. And on a rainy day or snowy day, when that opens, they will get moisture or water dripping directly on their gear which some people know, but most people don't. That is a hazard in and of itself because having wet gear and going into a uh, IDLH environment where you're facing temperatures of upwards of 500 to 1,000 degrees, it essentially creates the same effect as when you create a baked potato and you wrap it in aluminum foil and you're holding in all of that heat and moisture that exposes or creates the potential for the firefighter or the wearer of the gear to have steam burns or be burned uh, reduces the effectiveness of the PPE. Another thing you'll notice about the bay is we have very limited workspace and we also combine multiple functions into this limited base space. So not only do we need to house the apparatus here, we have what is supposed to be a decon area, which really isn't a, a true de decontamination area. We also have our workbench where we do uh, minor repairs. Our SCBA fill station is also here in the bay. None of it protected or secured in its own spaces. For those of you who may not know, the, the fire department is a 24-7 operation. We have four people on shift minimum, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Currently, the living space for those personnel is this trailer that sits out behind the main structure of the fire station. This trailer has been temporary since 2008 and is actually the second rendition. Right now, it is overburdened. We are definitely at capacity. This is actually a three bedroom trailer. We've modified what used to be the utility room into a fourth bedroom to accommodate the fourth on shift firefighter. I have not been able to find any other uh, fire department in the state of Massachusetts that has this arrangement um, other than those who are actually in a temporary facility where you know they have a new station being constructed or a significant remodel of a current facility. Not being housed in the same building with your apparatus creates a delay in, in response from the standpoint of there's increased distance. So it's not the most efficient. The other limitation uh, is the lack of restroom facilities in the living space. So we have four people that have to share one, one bathroom. I used to say when you have four people who are trying to respond to emergency and hurry out the door, one bathroom can create some challenges. The other challenge, you know, with walking across the parking lot is obviously when you're exposed to the elements. You know, we have had, unfortunately, instances where I've had firefighters slip and fall in the snow or on the ice. It's a extra hazard that our personnel have to face. What that does is, too, you, you have that whole potential for exposure and steam burns. We use this separate garage in the back. Currently it houses our antique but it also houses our marine units as well as uh, for storage of hose and uh, some training props and things of that nature. All of the apparatus and the living quarters housed in, in one facility would be a great enhancement to our operation and provide a, a better or enhanced level of, of safety for the personnel. After the police department moved out, we did inherit some office space, but there was also some space that is not conducive for use uh, by the fire department. The old jail cells, for example, we've adapted to use for storage. The old uh, police locker room has now become firematic storage from our safe supplies to medical PPE supplies, uh, hand sanitizer, uh, various types of cleaners that we use. It's kind of a catch-all storage area now. We also have, you'll notice, these two um, kind of stand-up wardrobes, if you will, or, or old lockers, which we now currently use as our uh, bunker gear storage or 
our quartermaster area. Ineffective, but we, we make the most of it. You know, you can see here some of our restroom facilities that are, are very uh, tired is maybe the best description. Been, been around for a long time haven't been upgraded or remodeled or enhanced since the building was built and then remodeled in the 80s. So we've adapted some of these spaces. We have our area that we call kind of our war room or operations room uh, where we have workstations for the on-duty personnel to be able to do reports, create training PowerPoints or study, which isn't ideal. Our current shift commanders are not able to have a dedicated workspace because of the lack of office spaces within our current building. We have also been able to convert a small office to the EMS office. We also were able to use another office for our deputy chief to have an office. We were able to, with donations from uh, the Magner family create the Magner training room. I believe this room used to be the old police chief's office and we have now converted that into our training room. It is one of the things we've done to try to adapt and overcome and maximize the use of the current space we have, but it is lacking. When we have our weekly organized training drills and we need to do a classroom portion and we have the various members of the call department plus the on-shift personnel plus our training coordinator, the room gets very small and very cramped very quickly. But again, it's a space that is undersized and greatly needs to be enhanced to meet the needs of the department. We use the training room to handle things like meetings with groups because there's not a space that would accommodate small conferences or handle business type interactions. I believe this was an old kitchen or kind of conference area before the police moved out. We have adapted it into our uh, cardio studio, if you will, so that our personnel can do physical training while on duty or come in off duty to stay in shape and stay um, in good physical condition to, to perform our duties. As you can see, almost every space in this building has multiple functions or serving multiple purposes. We don't really have a dedicated place or spot for the public to come and actually, you know, sit down and discuss and handle those things. The firefighters and the personnel have taken a lot of pride and ownership in this building. It may be difficult to tell by the state of it and the age of it, and it has definitely been used and served its purpose and will continue to be used until another solution can be brought to the table or come up with. But these, these are the conditions, and this is just a general tour and the things that you know we think it's important that all of the members and taxpayers of the town need to know and need to see so they have an understanding of you know where their service is coming from and how the various assets are being stored and kept in a state of uh, operational readiness as best they can with the facilities that we have.